Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com here to show off the latest Android M developer preview that was unveiled today at Google I.O. There's a lot of added features to Android coming with the M build. So let's go ahead and check it out and take a look at all these features. Okay, got it. And you'll see a new wallpaper. Um, we'll check those out in just a second. All right, so I looked into it. It's the only new wallpaper. I like it though, pretty cool. Anyways, let's go and let me prove to you I am on Android M. So going into settings, scroll down, go to about phone, Android version M right there. So let's check out the Easter egg real quick. They did include one, so an updated Easter egg, very similar to Lollipops. You'll see I press and hold on it and they're like, oh, we don't know what it's gonna be. So there's literally no information about what M's gonna actually be called. You'll notice there's a very similar design to Lollipop. There won't be very many design changes. They're gonna stick with material design overall with the operating system. All right, so let's, let's take a look at the lock screen. It's a little bit different. You'll see the clock's a little more prominent. Up at the top looks a bit different. Bottom left, you'll see a quick voice search as opposed to the phone icon, which takes you to the dialer. So you'll see a very quick, easy way to uh, do a Google search. So the stock Google Now launcher is very similar similar as you can see of Google now on the far left right here. However, one different change is the app drawer right here. So you have a search icon, you have Google now suggest app suggestions up at the top. So app suggestions and then a vertical scrolling screen. So a lot different, but it is completely categorized on the left to see by letter alphabetized. So a lot different than you're used to swiping horizontally uh, on those different pages. Now a much needed update to Android M is the volume controls on the side. So pressing the button, you'll see I have volume and then uh, vibrate. But if I go down one more, it actually puts it into silent mode. You'll see alarms only until you turn this off. So you can get into silent mode with your volume controls. Finally, you can also press this arrow and change alarm volume and music volume as well. And then also when you swipe down in these quick settings right here, you have a do not disturb option where you can have alarms only, priority only uh, for a certain amount of time until you turn this off or go into total silence as well, all within just this quick settings. You'll see it doesn't leave it. If you press it, it opens up the settings or you can turn it off right there. Another awesome feature is called Now on Tap. They haven't really implemented it yet. So you'll see when you're within an app, let's say for example, someone texts you, hey, you wanna get dinner at uh, Chipotle or something and you wanna search a Chipotle, all you have to do is swipe up from that home button and you'll see this is what is going to look like. So cards about the screen were just uh, aren't available in this release. So you'll see you have a search up there where it's going to give you uh, suggestions down at the bottom, search results down at the bottom as well. You can't use it. So you'll see if I go to this, it's going to actually open up uh, a Google search, a whole separate one. A little hidden menu that I actually found within the settings here, uh, when I went to developer options, you'll see you can change the theme of the settings. So if I go to dark, you'll see it completely changed to dark all throughout the entire settings application. Very interesting. Uh, I didn't really notice any changes within uh, any other specific application or anything like that. You'll see the background is still light in this. Google Now is still light, but those settings all, all the way through, whether in Wi-Fi, uh, display settings, they all have that dark background as opposed to light. So a nice little update, and hopefully they make more of those theme changes available. Now a couple more added features to Android M is app permissions and app backup. So let's go to app permissions first. So if I go into apps, you'll see here's all my installed apps. You can press this menu button to show system apps as well. But if we go into advanced, you'll see here we have app permissions right here. And which ones access these various things, whether it be location, your calendar, your contacts, your phone, your SMS, your sensors, all that interesting information. So if we don't want an app to access our contacts, let's say, hey, Cord, what are you doing? I don't want you to access my contacts. This app was designed for an older version of Android. Denying permissions may cause it to no longer function as intended. Deny. So there you go. You cannot access my contacts. Again, it might not cause it to not work properly, but hey, that might be worth it to see and test if some of these apps work or not. Or if for no reason, if you have a calculator app asking for access to your contacts, hey, you don't need that for the app to work. So there's that and then ignore optimizations as well. So there's some uh, ignore battery. There are battery optimizations and apparently these apps can ignore them. You can allow it to ignore them if you want. Uh, I couldn't find a way to actually turn it on or off. It looks like by default they have to be on. And then you'll see it talk about memory. So RAM, 
uh, how much maximum average good performance, uh, how much RAM was used over a certain amount of time. So a lot of inf interesting information within that settings. Now they have app backup as well, which is something that's crazy awesome. So we go to backup and reset. And then what you wanna do is you'll see backup my data is on right now. So let's read this. Um, so Wi-Fi passwords, call history, and app data such as settings and files stored by apps to Google Drive. So you'll see it doesn't add to your Google Drive. It says, uh, backup will not come towards your drive storage quota. Larger files or files developers have chosen to exclude from the service will not be backed up. So it has native backing up within your app. So if you uninstall an app on one device, install it on a different, it's going to reset those specific settings that you had within a certain app. All right, now let's go to the battery screen. It's a little bit different. Uh, you see this is usually light, but it's still stuck on that dark mode that I changed it to. I kind of like it. So we go into it and you'll see you have optimizations, those battery optimizations. You can reduce, it gives you a tip for what you can do to change the power usage of this screen. So it says reduce screen brightness uh, and or screen dot dot dot. So it doesn't even give you a full list. So you don't know what it's talking about, but it's screen timeout. But it's the same with other ones as well. So still standby, it says switch to airplane mode to save those the power from that, all that good stuff. And speaking of battery life, they actually included something called Doze. And essentially what's gonna happen is when you're not using it, screen off, and it's just sitting there in this state, Android's going to exponentially back off background activity, trading off a little bit of app freshness for longer battery life. So that's what Doze is going to do. So essentially with idle, uh, with an idle phone, it's going to improve battery life. Now there's tap and pay, but there's really nothing included in here. How it works doesn't even do anything. Uh, it's, there's Android Pay now included, um, which will be coming, um, which I actually added fingerprint API. So there's fingerprint support throughout uh, the whole Android operating system now, which is going to allow you to buy apps and maybe music, games, all that good stuff from the Play Store. If you say you want to buy it, instead of typing in your password every time, you just put your finger on the scanner and it's going to scan it. Of course, you're going to need hardware support for that as well. All right, and you also have cut, copy, paste improvements. So if I go to Google Keep right here and I have an Android M note, so let's go ahead and go into it. So now when I select text, so if I double tap on this and I swipe and I move over, you'll see it'll copy the whole word as opposed to just trying to do it one by one. And then when you go backwards, it's gonna go letter by letter. Uh, but it's just so much better this way, um, just having a full word, because most people just wanna copy the whole word. Now you can hit share, select all, copy, or cut. So if I copy it and I press enter here and I tap on the screen, I can paste or select all. So I paste it and there you go, it worked just fine. But overall, that's everything I wanted to show off. I'm sure there's a couple things I might have missed. Feel free to comment and let me know if I did. I might do an updated video as well if certain things get added or certain things come out. So be sure to subscribe to me. A lot more Android M coverage coming very, very soon. Uh, they also talked about USB Type-C support, which isn't necessarily Android specific, but just hardware specific, which is nice to add as well. So that's it. That's Android M developer preview. Uh, on my Nexus 5, again, Nexus 6, Nexus 9, and Nexus Player are all supported. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Comment. I appreciate you watching, so please follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, subscribe as well. Uh, and that's really about it. Thank you very much for watching, guys.